it might seem a bit daft to be making crop rollers which are used in harvest in the middle of December, but with two to go out, so we get them, get them made. And um, yesterday there was someone locally combining. All in all, I've just been on sorting out this compact front box. It's to sell, it's the one that we've had in stock for a bit. And uh, so I just cleaned it up and put it on the track to get some pictures of it. So that's what it, just basically a steel box in there for storing tools and spare parts and chemicals and fluids to uh, get the job finished. So I was a bit different, our boxes are a bit different to everything else because they go on the front linkage when the arms are folded up. So that's one of our compact front boxes mounted on a tractor with the front linkage in its normal position. That's how most equipment will attach to a front linkage with the arms down and the top link. And I'll just measure how far it is from the tr front of the tractor to the front of one of our boxes like this. So from just under the John Deere logo to the front of the box is about 1.35 metres. So now I'll mount it on the front linkage with the arms folded up and the brackets that mean it's a compact front box. That's the arms in their down position and on this tractor it's quite easy to alter. Lift that up, pull that out, move the arm up and then put the pin back in where it needs to go in, in there. So that's basically one arm up, one arm up, one arm down. Let's do the other one. So that's them both up, both arms up, and they will go up a bit higher as well as a bit, of, bit more height on the rams. So that's one of our compact front boxes mounted on the arms when they're folded up. So you can see there's no big gap in there now, and uh, it's about 40 centimetres closer to the tractor. So if you imagine, if you're coming out of a gateway and you're stuck out here, it's a, big, it's a big difference to be fair, to give you an idea. That other box, when it was on, was where my thumb is. That's how much difference there is. Morning all. It's a fairly cold morning here. It's been frosty in the last two days, but it's sunny, so it's pretty nice to be there. Quite like the weather like this. This is steel that I've been to get from Norman Iverson's just up at Fingal. Uh, we're going to start making two crop press rollers. Uh, so that tube in the background, that's uh, to be cut up for the middle of the roller, and then the box section makes the chassis. Uh, I've got to go and get a load of um, laser cut parts as well that should have arrived, and that'll uh, make up the all the different parts we need to get on and start putting them together.
we're on making crop rollers. So Nigel's been putting this together. So this is one of the end plates. So that's uh, that's what the bo the bearing goes on to hold it. And then with all these different cutouts all line up with the different parts. So these these here go into these here and then we have these parts here that are the fillers and they have a tab on here so once you've got one end in that goes into there and drops like that so that's your first one then you just work your way around and if you've got it right it will just slot together as it should and it sort of all squares itself up so these some of these because of the way they're cut sometimes they have a bow in them but by putting these in basically gets them all straight and that's sort of how we put the crop rollers together and then a lot of welding to make them strong uh, one good thing about them was because they're quite heavy there's quite a lot of steel in them I thought they'd take quite a bit of sort of initial force to get them to rotate but actually they take nothing when they're, when they're on you can just set them off spinning and that that sort of weight in them keeps the inertia rolling so when you pull out of one end of a row it's still rolling to go into the next one so it's not like having to restart every time so yeah we've got uh, there's two of these to put together so that's all the stack of steel that makes up the other one and uh, this is um this is a bit of a fancy bit of steel that's the benefit of um laser cutting so this is cut and folded to help us align everything and I'll show you when it's on what it uh, what each of these different bits does and that basically was that there replaced that so that's what we'd used before and welded everything to it but although this is more expensive because it's cut and folded it actually makes assembly and welding and fabricating a lot easier so uh, yeah that's uh, that's the, the different bits and that that is one of those So that, that there is one of those and that obviously goes in there and that's the, that there is the tab that fits into one of these holes here. So that there is the end of that. And because of the, the way it's all cut it means that the tube in the centre centralises. So um, yeah, it... Uh, Works out quite well, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks to all the effort that you've put in at the computer, it's just a big Lego set. There's tiny little pieces here and there that might be a bit small from the way or something, because it is that well tolerant. But you can just push fit things together and it's all square. So when we put them together, I'll put a video on, we actually build them on their end. And uh, yeah. We've, so we've put this one together on its end and then laid it down. To... Morning all, how are you doing? It's another cold and frosty morning here. It's pretty stunning to be fair. Fairly hard frost over the couple last few days. Uh, we're on making crop rollers. It might seem a bit daft to be making crop rollers which are used in harvest in the middle of December but we've two to go out so we get them, get them made. And um, yesterday there was someone locally combining although me and I just think they were more doing topping because there wasn't a lot to go at, but uh, yeah. So, combining in December, a bit unusual, but never mind. Uh, so yeah, we got on not so bad yesterday. Uh, Nige put together one of the crop rollers and got it welded up, so I'm going to put the other one together today. The actual roller part, that is. Uh, and then there's the chassis to, to make, so we'll get them made early part of next week. And um, yeah, should be should be good. So, uh, we'll show you a bit of that. So that's the bottom base plate, the centre tube, and then the fins on it. So they've all gone in, and they're just just held on together with a 
bungee cord and then we'll put the top the top disc on now I've got the roller tack together now so I'm going around putting these these in so they just go into them little tabs at the bottom like that and then we go around and square everything up because sometimes these will have a bow in them the heat because they're quite long the heat's warped them a bit so by doing putting those in and making sure they're touching here and here and here we know that uh, we've got it square and then it means that the top end's right as well One of the features I quite like about my pickup, and it's very, very lazy, and yeah, not good for the environment, but anyway, um, you've got, there's an app on my phone, so you go on here, and if you just hold down start, when it's freezing outside, it will automatically start it, and it'll run it for 15 minutes to de-ice it. That's it running. It should be good for engine as well because it means you're not jumping in it and flashing it straight from the off. So yeah. Sweet. Thank you James. <laughs> Bye James. Bye bye. <laughs>